I'm super pumped to show you guys this update. Let me explain kind of why I wanted to do this update. Big reason is mostly for user onboarding and just making the initial user experience easier and making it easier to train certain things. So we are introducing a simpler model. Okay, let me go home and show you what I mean. Actually, before I do that, you'll see like, this is like the conventional model uses uh, kind of like a neural network. Um, we created, we've been in the lab uh, for the past while creating a simpler model. And so if you go into your settings over here and you click on model, basically there is a new toggle you can have here, which is model type. The original is the original neural network. If you click on simple, it's a simplified type of model, which I will walk you guys through this, this type of model. Even though I'm training on the simple model type, it's a new model. If at any point I want to switch back to the original, it goes back to my last, um, the last original model that I did have, right? It doesn't erase any of that training. It keeps it all and it puts it to the side. So that if you want to switch back at a later date, you can. So for the simple model, by default, it just has equal probability of doing everything. Okay, that's uh, the base of, of the simple model is that um, if you don't show it something, it's just going to have an equal probability. This is slightly different than the artificial neural network. The artificial neural network is randomly initialized, so it takes um, almost like the probabilities are randomly assigned, basically. Here, the probabilities are all equal once you just initialize a simple model. The second thing is how does this model actually work? Um, like how does it take actions? Basically what we did is we split up the environment into many different buckets, right? These are all the different scenarios you can be in. So for example, one of the scenarios is I am far from the opponent, right? Another one is I am close to the opponent. Of course, there are sub buckets here. So I'm far from the opponent while on the stage. I'm close to the opponent while on the stage. I, I hope that makes sense. There's some other ones like I'm close to the opponent while on the stage and the opponent is in shield. I'm close to the opponent while on the stage and the opponent is hitting me, right? Stuff like that. So we have broken these down into buckets. We have 92 buckets. We divided these into discrete buckets that the AI is looking into. Let's, um, let's show you guys the magic. I think you guys are gonna like it. So um, I'll hop into training. I'll just do it on I'll do it on the arena and yeah, let's just do this thing. So there's a lot of cool stuff you guys are going to see that the model is able to do right out of the box. So I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to run to the opponent. And then when I'm at the opponent, I'm going to hit them. Okay. That's the only thing I showed it. So I'm going to hop into training configuration over here. Um, and we have a new configuration screen. You'll see the simple config. We made it much simpler there are five areas that you can potentially focus, right? These are the macro buckets that you can be in. So you can be in neutral combat, right? This is just when both of you are on the stage, okay? You can be in vertical combat, which is when both of you are on the stage, but one of you is either above or below the other. You can be in an advantage state. This is when either you are edge guarding, right? So you are on the stage, but your opponent's off the stage or you have an on-stage advantage. So for example, your element is charged. That's why I had to remove my element just because I didn't want to train the advantage state, okay? But there's other things like, for example, if your opponent's in knockback and you're not, so on and so forth. The disadvantage state is almost like a, a flip of the advantage state, right? So when your opponent is on the stage and you're trying to get back on stage or when they have their element charged and you don't, also when you have a projectile coming at you, right? So this is stuff that we lump into the disadvantage state. And then finally, we have a big bucket for when you're both off stage, you're both doing some off stage fighting. Um, and we further broke this down into when you're to the side of the platform and when you're under the platform. In the advanced configuration, we also, um, we made it a little more in depth, but we didn't want to overwhelm users with a lot of information. Because remember, this is a simple model. So even the advanced config is not overwhelming. So in terms of focus areas, we expanded on a few. You see that neutral and both off stage is the same, but the other ones we kind of expanded. One bucket is um, when you're both on stage, but the opponent is above you. 
Another one is when the opponent is below you. One of them is just edge guarding if you only want to train edge guarding. When you have the on stage advantage without edge guarding. Um, when you're being edge guarded and when you're both on stage and have you have a disadvantage. Um, for example, I just want to train neutral right now. Okay, uh, and because we are both on stage. So I'll click train model. And you see, training takes a split second. Uh, with the simple model, we designed it in a way uh, because it's not a gradient based model like a neural network. No matter how much data you collect, training will always happen in a split second, um, which I think is really, really cool. So the first thing you'll notice is that the probability of doing all these other actions, the combat actions is zero, right? Because when I was far from the opponent, all I did was run towards it, right? And you see, there's uh, basically a 100% probability of running. Now, I remember people asked before, how on earth can you make your AI just run without attacking? Um, this is one of the ways that we're gonna be able to do it, right? Where we have this discrete bucket that in this specific state, when we're far away from the opponent, all I want you to do is run. Now I'm gonna move closer to the opponent. Now when I get close to the opponent, now the probability of attacking increases. You, and now you're able to see, this is the exact point in which it differentiates between far and close. One problem here potentially is that obviously when you have these discrete changes, it's not as smooth or continuous, right? Um, but I think that's fine for now. I think people can start to understand um, concepts a little easier when we introduce it with these discrete buckets. Now, I haven't even shown you guys the coolest part yet, um, but what I'll first note is that if I switch the direction, now it's a completely different bucket, okay? So it doesn't know what to do in this scenario yet. And, which is another problem where you don't have interpolation because usually with interpolation, it would combine some of the other features that could still be used to train. In this case, if you haven't seen this bucket, it doesn't even touch it. Um, this is a pro and con. One of the great things here is that if I'm training, for example, at edge guarding or even just recovering onto platform, right? It won't change these probabilities at all, which is what you guys will see soon. Change the opponent. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch sides. Now, I don't know if you guys just realized what happened. Um, but I switched sides and it automatically learned to run to the left. I never showed it that, right? Let's, let's switch sides again. Here, I'm learning to run to the right. And uh, um, here, I'm learning to run to the left. What we introduced is the concept of auto-inverting certain actions in certain buckets. Okay, so we identified a number of buckets that can benefit from auto inverting. So for example, if I'm running towards my opponent when I'm to the left of them far away, probability that I'm gonna to wanna to do the same on the other side of the opponent is pretty high. So what we did is we classified this as an invertible bucket so that you only have to show it what to do on either side and it'll automatically invert it to be able to work on both sides automatically. So you don't need to collect data on both sides for the simple model. There's more I, I gotta show you guys. This isn't even it yet. <laughs> Um, but this is just, this is just the start. You can imagine, um, we have like a big table, like you can call this the model and the table operates in like cells, right? So it has like all these cells. Each one of these cells is a discrete bucket, right? So maybe this cell is on stage plus, uh, far from opponent. Okay, so that's the state definition of this cell. Also stores information, right? So we have the, the direction over here and then we have like the combat stuff over here. And it's basically like storing like the, um, the probabilities that you'll take like each action, right? Same thing with here, it'll basically store probabilities that you'll take each action. It stores other stuff, which I'll get into a bit later. But that's it at a high level. It's basically a tabular agent, uh, which you can glorify name for a lookup table. Each cell in this table is a specific situation you can be in. And in that situation, we're storing probabilities, which is the probabilities um, derived from the frequency you've done actions in that state. One really, really, really cool thing, which I will show you guys very soon. If I only show it something, 
on cell two. Okay. In the next training session, I only show it something on cell two. It's not going to affect what I showed it on cell one at all. What we do in the training algorithm is we only identify uh, the cells that we showed it things for this specific session. And those are the only ones we're going to update, right? Which means that all the other cells are left untouched. So it retains their training. This isn't even, you know, the common like Dragon Ball Z, like meme that this isn't even my final form. Well, this is it. I hope you're not disappointed. <laughs> you guys need to see what we have planned. This is a stepping stone. Um, the first thing I want to show you is exactly what I just explained. It, it's, it's not going to affect basically what we just taught it. Only on this side, I'm going to teach it how to get back. Actually, that was a bad one. Sorry, my, my hands were a bit jittery. I'll just do it again. There you go. I just taught it that. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to move the opponent to the other side of the stage. Basically, these are two distinct buckets, right? One of them is when the opponent is at the same edge as that you're trying to recover, right? So they're edge guarding you. And the other is when they're on a completely separate side of the stage. So they're not really a threat to you. Okay. We wanted to provide those two scenarios because maybe you recover differently in both of those scenarios. You guys are going to see, I'm going to hop into advanced configuration and I'm only going to focus on when we're being edge guarded over here, right? This is basically just when the opponent's on stage and we're off stage. Going to do this. You'll see this did not change at all. If I move close to the opponent, this did not change at all. It retained exactly what we showed it. But if I hop off here, now it's 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 doing basically exactly what we showed it, which is how to recover. Uh, and yeah, you see the probability slightly change when it gets closer to the edge, right? When it's actually edge guarding us versus like when it's farther away. You see that uh, you see that these probabilities slightly change. What happens if I go to the other side? Boom, automatic inversion. It goes up and to the right, right? We don't need to show it how to recover on both sides. It just learned it, which is really, really cool. And also you see that it learned error. It retained exactly what we taught it before. If, for example, I don't click being edge guard and I click neutral, what it's going to do is going to select all of the situations where we were just showing it stuff in the neutral states. And if I train it, you see that this gets undone because this is not a neutral state. In fact, we didn't show it anything in the neutral state, so nothing gets updated. So just wanted to flag that for you guys that this really, this focus area is truly, it will only focus on this thing and nothing else. Um, this is another really cool thing. I want to show you guys that when we're close to the opponent, what we currently do is we just attack. Okay, we press the attack. I'm going to switch it up a little bit just to show you guys something really cool. So I'm going to get close to the opponent. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on and then I'm going to jump. That's all I wanted to do. Go into training over here. And again, this was in the neutral state. So I'll just train the model. When I get close to the opponent, boom. So it, it learned exactly what I showed it, which is to jump when I'm close to the opponent in the neutral state. Now, what I want to show you guys is this concept of a learning multiplier. This is much simpler than the concept of a learning rate. The learning rate in the back end um, is determined by basically how confident your model is um, in a certain situation. Um, the high level is the more and more you show it things in that situation, the more and more confident it becomes. I showed it a few things in this situation, so it's more confident than this situation over here because I've never showed it anything like that. And so each situation is going to have a custom learning rate essentially that's the first thing to note what this learning multiplier does it it just applies a multiplier like it sounds on this learning rate that we automatically compute for you so we can reduce it down you see the probabilities here if we reduce it down now the change is much smaller right but if we pump it up now 100 percent probability of jumping because we're saying let's maximize the learning for this session okay we wanted to give you guys the option to do this I'm going to want to do two things. What I want to show my, my agent. One is when my elemental is charged up, I want it to do it to the opponent when I'm far away. Um, the other is when the opponent does an elemental on me, I want to block it. Um, turn this on. Boom. So now it should be able to learn this without disrupting anything else that I showed it. I'm going to switch to the opponent. I'm just going to... Um, 
just going to record it doing that. So now, now once it gets charged again, uh, I'll just be able to, to block it. I just want to show it to shield in this particular state. Perfect. So I just shielded. I'm going to stop, hop into training config. Um, in the advanced config, but we showed it, we showed it basically when we had an on-stage advantage, right? And then also when we were at an on-stage disadvantage. So when the projectile was coming towards us, we're going to train over here. As you guys see, everything kept exactly. Nothing has changed from what we showed it before. But now if I pump up my elemental, beautiful. Now it's just hundred percent probability of doing the special, but look, it only does that when the opponent is in line with us, right? That's one of the buckets for when we have an advantage. It's, are we in direct line to hit the opponent? And also, do we have our elemental powered up? If we do, then that's a specific bucket. And so we showed it what to do in this exact bucket. When we have an elemental coming at us from the opponent, we increase the probability of shielding, right? And now if it's not coming towards us, it won't do that. If it's coming towards us, it will do that, right? Boom. So now we just taught it to what was before very hard things in a very, very simple way. And while doing this, we retained all the probabilities of all of our other actions the buckets don't take into account all the information in the environment, right? It won't take into account the exact position of all the different types of platforms is I'm off the platform, right? And my opponent is far away from the platform. That's all it takes into account. It doesn't take into account, oh, maybe there's like a wall uh, right here, right? It, it won't take that into account. That's one of the downfalls of this, of course, um, we could make this a bucket, but then if we consider all possible scenarios, we're going to end up with a hundred thousand or a million buckets, right? Um, which is why initially we use an artificial neural network, right? And we use generalized inputs like ray casting to take this into account. I wasn't going to reveal this now, but one thing I'll let you guys know is we are working on a combination of the simple model and the neural networks um, to basically... Actually, I won't say exactly what we're doing, but it's going to be a combination of them. So we're going to be able to have these discrete states, like the simple model, right? Where only when you show it things in that state, it's only going to update that and it's not going to affect anything else. But we're going to have the power and generalizability of the neural networks in each of these buckets. I'm very, very excited about that. Again, I just wanted to mention the simple model is just a stepping stone to get there. But when we have our ultimate model, um, then we're going to be able to tackle this. I think it's going to be a great stepping stone to get more people really into AI arena and, and at least have it be an easier uh, onboarding experience for them. And then it also helps us in terms of like creating this ultimate model, because again, this is meant to be a simple model. We can't give users full flexibility on, on everything. I was thinking about it, but I feel like it's meant not for the very advanced users. You know, it's meant for having to be a stepping stone into AI arena. Um, and because of that, we wanted to make it kind of easy to understand, give you some flexibility, but not too much. If you start to really crave the flexibility, that's when you want to go and use either our original model or eventually the ultimate model, which is um, the, the new final model that we're going to introduce. Happy training. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'm very keen to see all the really, really cool things that you guys are able to do with this.